this is the first in a series of videos where I'm going to be talking about some books that have really influenced me, really opened my mind and um, just broadened my perspective. The first book I want to talk about is a book called Power vs. Force by David R. Hawkins. Now, Dr. Hawkins has developed a technique to calibrate different levels of consciousness. And it's a technique called kinesiology. I think I got that right. And it's a muscle testing technique um, where your muscle goes weak if it's false and it goes strong if it's true. Now, I'm not going to go into the technique itself because I don't think I can do it justice because I don't have a deep enough grasp of it. But what I do want to talk about in this video is the levels of consciousness. So I'm going to put the levels up. He's got an interesting table here. You can pause the video. So you have each level with its corresponding view of life. So he explains that you know every spirit, every soul comes into third density, this reality, at a certain level of consciousness. And that's why certain people are compelled to do certain things and others are not compelled to do, to do that because they've already got the wisdom. And the aim of the game is to leave at a higher level of consciousness that you came in at. And then you may need to reincarnate to get to a higher level until you reach the point where you no longer need to come back into third density, as it's been known as. So, let's start with level 200. He's got a short description of the characteristics of each level. So we're going to start at 200. At the 200 level, power first appears. When we test subjects at all the energy levels below 200, we find that they all go weak. Everyone goes strong in response to the life supportive fields above 200. This is the critical line that distinguishes power and negative influences of life. At the level of courage, an attainment of true power occurs. Therefore, it's also the level of empowerment. This is the zone of exploration, accomplishment, fortitude and determination. At the lower levels, the world is seen as hopeless, sad, frightening or frustrating. But at the level of courage, life is seen to be exciting, challenging and stimulating. Courage implies the willingness to try new things and deal with changes and challenges of life. At this level of empowerment, one is able to cope with and effectively handle the opportunities of life. At 200, for instance, the energy to learn new job skills is available. Growth and education become attainable goals. There's the capacity to face fears or character defects and to grow despite them. Anxiety also does not cripple endeavour as it would at lower stages of evolution. Obstacles that defeat people whose consciousness is below 200 act as stimulants to those who have evolved into the first level of true power. So I can relate to that. What he's saying is that at this level, what you would in the past deem as an obstacle, you now see it as a challenge and you see it as stimulating. I reached a certain level a certain point of maturity in my life where I no longer saw my problems um, I didn't get as frustrated I saw my problems as opportunities to learn about myself so I would go with I would go within and I would ask myself questions you know what what is it about me that I have yet to overcome what is this problem or this person this situation trying to show me what is it trying to reveal to me about myself? And that's how I view my 
my challenges in my life. Okay, so on to the next level, which is neutrality and has been calibrated at 250. Energy becomes very positive as we get to the level we have termed neutral because it's epitomized by release from the positionality that typifies lower levels. Below 250, consciousness tends to see dichotomies and take on rigid positions, an impediment in a world that's complex and multifactorial rather than black and white. Taking such positions creates polarization, which in turn creates opposition and division. As in martial arts, a rigid position becomes a point of vulnerability. That which doesn't bend is liable to break. Rising above barriers or oppositions that dissipate one's energies, the neutral condition allows for flexibility and non-judgmental, realistic appraisal of problems. To be neutral means to be relatively unattached to outcomes. Not getting one's way is no longer experienced as defeating, frightening or frustrating. At the neutral level, a person can say, well, if I don't get this job, then I'll get another. There is the beginning of inner confidence. Sensing one's power, one isn't easily intimidated or driven to prove anything. The expectation that life, with its ups and downs, will be basically okay if one can roll with the punches in a 250 level attitude. People of neutrality have a sense of well-being. The mark of this level is a confident capability to live in the world. This is the level of safety. People at this level are easy to get along with and safe to be around and associate with because they're not interested in conflict competition or guilt. They're comfortable and basically undisturbed emotionally. This attitude is non-judgmental and doesn't lead to any need to control other people's behaviours. Correspondingly, due to neutral people's value of freedom, they're difficult to control. So, at this level, you no longer feel the need to control other people's behavior. So people who have come into the world at a lower at a lower level of consciousness, you no longer judge them or feel that they should be punished. You're no longer trying to drag people all of a sudden from level 250. You're not trying to drag them up to 500. You allow them to learn what they have to learn. You allow them to go through their lessons so that they can reach their higher levels of consciousness which they are destined to reach. And that is real love, allowing someone to learn from their mistakes. Because if you drag them up there, it's not going to work. They're compelled to do what they're compelled to do. Okay, now I want to talk about acceptance and love. So I'm going to move on to acceptance, but just so that you know, in the book he does go through each level. So acceptance 350. At this level a major transformation takes place. With the understanding that one is oneself the source and creator of the experience of one's life. All people below 200 tend to be powerless and see themselves as victims at the mercy of life. This stems from a belief that the source of one's happiness or the cause of one's problems is out there. At the acceptance stage, nothing out there has the capacity to make one happy and love isn't something that's given or taken away by another, but is created from within. Acceptance allows engagement in life on life's own terms without trying to make it conform to an agenda. The individual at this level isn't interested in determining right or wrong, but instead is dedicated to resolving issues and finding out what to do about problems. Long-term goals 
take precedence over short term ones. Self discipline and mastery are prominent. Okay, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to talk about love level 500. Love as depicted in the mass media is not what this level is about. What the world generally refers to as love is an intense emotional condition combining physical attraction, possessiveness, control, addiction, eroticism and novelty. It's usually fragile and fluctuating, waxing and waning with varying conditions. When frustrated, this emotion often reveals an underlying anger and dependency that it had masked. That love can turn to hate is a common perception, but here an addictive sentimentality is likely what's being spoken about rather than love. There probably never was actual love in such a relationship, for hate stems from pride, not love. This 500 level is characterized by the development of a love that is unconditional, unchanging and permanent. It doesn't fluctuate, its source isn't dependent on external factors. Loving is a state of being. It's a forgiving, nurturing and supportive way of relating to the world. Love isn't intellectual. It doesn't proceed from the mind. Love emanates from the heart. It has the capacity to lift others and accomplish great feats because of its purity of motive. Love takes no position and thus is global, rising above separation. It's then possible to be one with another, for there are no longer any barriers. Love is therefore inclusive and expands the sense of self progressively. Love focuses on the goodness of life in all its expressions and augments that which is positive. It dissolves negativity by recontextualizing it rather than attacking it. So what he's talking about there is what we usually think of being love is actually attachment. Maybe there are times when we feel a certain way about ourselves as long as some, that somebody is in our lives. And that's reflected in a lot of the music that you see, uh, popular music. When it speaks of love, it's actually describing codependency, where your emotional state and well-being is dependent on that particular person being in your life. So eventually you can reach the stage where you're so in touch with Source that the freedom that you want for yourself you also want that for everybody else, even your partner. Think about it. You would want the freedom to walk away from someone. If you've fallen out of love with someone, you realize, you know, I just no longer love this person. And you may have outgrown them or something, or, you know, you've just fallen out of love with that person, and a new person is coming into your life which is, who is a better reflection of who you truly are. You would want the freedom to be able to walk away from that relationship and you grant that freedom to other people. Even if your partner turns around and says, look, I want to be with this other person. Now, I'm not saying that it wouldn't hurt. You know, there may be a grieving process that you go through, but at the end of the day, it doesn't destroy you, it doesn't cripple you because you're in love with the source, you're in love with self and what that person wants for themselves, you want them to have that for themselves because you truly love them and you're able to love them because you've learned to love yourself. Okay, so there you have it guys. Power versus Force, David R. Hawkins, it's a great read, it goes through all of the other levels. Um, it's very methodical and scientific in some parts, um, but it's a great, great
great read. Anyway, hope you like that, guys. Catch us on the next video.